uh, it's kind of mind blowing because I was roommates with Tommy years before we made the room, and um, he said, you know. I will write a movie. Uh, when Hollywood see my movie, they will be shocked. <laughs> and people will not sleep for two weeks. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 sure, I'm sure. Uh, what's it called? It would be called The Room. I will play Johnny, all American guy. You will play Mark, like this guy, actor, I forget, Mark Damon. <laughs> I was like, it's Matt, but I won't even bring it up, because I like where this is going. Uh, and so he said, this movie will shock the world, and uh, he started writing the script. He disappeared for nine months, came back, had me read it, and I was just, I was blown away. It was like six or seven characters, male, female, didn't matter, they all talked like him. <laughs> and uh, I was like, if this thing ever gets made, it could be something special. Uh, so as a warm-up, we're going to read from... An alternate room, which I think is even more amazing. So I just need a couple volunteers for the first scene. Um, I need a Johnny and a Lisa, right there? Yes, right here. And then, I guess I'll play Mark. <laughs> Ooh, welcome to the stage! <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, so I'll read this. Alright, scene five. I, there's no scene, it just randomly says scene five. <laughs> uh, smiling, Lisa very quickly straightens the bed, then she washes the coffee cups, puts the candles away and changes to jeans and t-shirt. She puts pasta in the oven. <laughs> and settles in the chair with a magazine. Shortly there is the sound of a key in the door. Johnny enters the apartment with one red rose. Hi, how are you? He gives Lisa the rose and takes his blazer off and sits down on the couch. Lisa is smiling, putting the rose to her nose. Thank you. I'm doing great. You're so charming. You always give me flowers. <laughs> You're so unique. Let me kiss you. <laughs> Lisa gets up and kisses Johnny on the cheek. What's cooking? <laughs> Pasta, your favorite dish, my sweet pie. You're awfully happy today. What's up? Did you get a client? I call dozens of clients, but no one needs my service. It's very tough. Do you feel like eating now? <laughs> I'm starving. What else did you do today? You're in a very good mood. Let me fix the pasta. <laughs> I'll take a shower. Johnny disappears into the bathroom. Lisa waits until the water is running and dials a number on the phone. Hi, Mark. I miss you. I just saw you. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Sorry, my darling. I just wanted to hear your sexy voice. I can tell you something else. I like, I like how you put our sexy hands around my body. You excite me so, and I love you. Is Johnny there? Yeah, he's in the shower. But I like you better. <laughs> I don't understand you. Why do you do that? Because I love you. Sarcastically. <laughs> yeah. You don't care, do you? See you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I do care. But look, we agreed it's over between us. I understand. I'm with you. It's our secret. I still have feelings for you. <laughs> but I guess you don't care. Yes, I do care. Don't drive yourself crazy. The water stops running. I have to go now. See you later, my darling. <laughs> don't call me that. Okay, bye. Bye. Johnny comes out of the bathroom with a towel around his middle. <laughs> and goes to the closet. Who are you talking to? My mother. <laughs> Is she okay? Oh, she tested her breast cancer, and now she's talking about dying. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
face, is it? No, I'm not worried. She is preparing dinner and putting everything on the table. Dinner is ready. They sit down to eat. What happened last night? I don't remember anything. Did we, did we make love? You don't remember? You poor little thing. You don't remember when you hit me? <laughs> hit you? I would never do that. Even if I was drunk, you must be kidding. It's not true, is it? Do you have a bruise? <laughs> yes, it's true. They are eating. I will, never, I will never drink again. I feel sick. I can't eat anymore. He pushes his plate away. I'm strong. Don't worry about it. I need some money. I have to buy a new dress. How much do you want? Around $300. Why so much? Uh... Johnny pulls out his wallet and hands her three $100 bills. Thank you, Johnny. You're always so generous with me. I have to be. We will be married soon. You love me, don't you? <laughs> of course I do. Lisa gets up, clears the table, and changes her clothes. <laughs> I'm going I'm going to the roof to straighten out my head. Uh, are you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. See. exactly how normal couples talk to each other. <laughs> Next one, could I get a Peter and a Mark? Um, anybody way in the back? All right, Peter right there, and then Mark right there in the middle. The whole script is like that, by the way. It's just like every page blows your mind. You should hear some of the stuff Claudette says. Alright, uh, scene 10. Peter comes out of the door to the roof and finds Mark sitting on the bench looking depressed. Oh, hi, Mark. What's happening? Hi, Peter. Pause. This is a good place to think, huh? Mark pulls a joint out of his pocket and lights it. Oh. Want to put me on the clock? What's that? Peter points to the joint. Mark offers the joint to Peter. You want some? Peter holds up his hands. <laughs> no, man. You know I don't smoke that stuff. You look depressed. <laughs> I got this sick feeling in my stomach. I did something awful, and I can't forgive myself. Why don't you tell me about it? I feel like running or killing myself or something crazy like that. <laughs> Why are you smoking this crap? No wonder you can't think straight. That stuff will mess up your brain. Anyway, it's none of your business. Why are you so noisy? You think you know everything. You don't know shit. <laughs> Just a minute. Who do you think you are? You're acting like a kid. Grow up. Peter throws the joint to the floor and smashes it out with his shoe. He is yelling. Who are you calling a kid? Fuck you. <laughs> Peter grabs him by the arm. They stand up together. Hold it, Mark. I'm just trying to talk to help you. I know you're having an affair with Lisa. Am I wrong? Mark jerks his arm away from Peter's grip and hits him in the face with his fist and knocks him down. Peter is unconscious. Mark stares at him. Wake up, man. Wake up. <laughs> Mark looks around and sees a bucket of water, grabs it, and pours it on Peter's face. Peter shakes his head and slowly wakes up, and he sits up. What are you doing? Are you crazy? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. You're my best friend. Are you okay? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Let's talk about your problem. <laughs> Peter takes his shirt off and wipes his face with it. Mark sits next to Peter. Are you sure you're okay? Pause. 
Why do you want to know my secret? Well, you're right. It's Lisa. I don't know what to do. I'm so depressed. I think I'll kill myself. John is my best friend. She's so manipulative. How did this happen? If Johnny finds out, that would be the end of your friendship. What were you thinking? Look, life is very complex, but you have to face it. You have to be responsible. My advice to you is that you should, think in, should stop thinking about her and never do sex with her. Try <laughs> another girl. That's my advice. Lisa is a sociopath. She cares only about herself. And she's incapable of loving anyone. Whatever, Peter. Let's go. <laughs> they go out the door. None of those lines were changed, because if it was just left exactly the way that it was, maybe there's a vampire flying car. We find out Johnny's origin. So, uh, anyway, before the movie, if you guys have any questions uh, about the sex scenes, the football, the breast cancer, we can uh, we can start the Q&A. Anybody else? <laughs> No questions <laughs> Where did the drugs come from? Uh, I think Denny was doing PCP, and uh, Chris R. got tired of it. Actually, that scene is, is incredible, the Chris R. scene, because you have no idea what's happening. Like, who sold the drugs, who bought them? Everyone, like, magically appears on the rooftop. It's sunny, then it's cloudy, and then the drug dealer like just gets taken away to the police, and then they come back like a minute later. So I guess the police station's like right below. There's so many questions. It's such a great station. How old is Danny? I think he was supposed to be 16, and then I think anywhere 16 to 46, but we couldn't. We couldn't, we couldn't decide it while we were filming. We just let it go. 36 to 93, I think. <laughs> Still trying to figure it out. Uh, New, Orle New Orleans. I was in New Orleans recently, and there's a lot of people that talk with that accent. Uh, I'm totally kidding. Leave your stupid comments in your pocket. You know what's, what's incredible is that Tommy made a t-shirt uh, with my face on it and it said, leave your stupid comments to your pocket. Uh, what does Mark do for a living? I had the idea that he was like a narcotics officer. Because you see him in the car the first time, he's like on the phone and he's like waiting. He's like, I'm very busy, but he's not doing anything. And, uh, but then the drugs got involved, and he goes up to the rooftop to like smoke weed. I probably would just do it in his apartment. So there's something, something bizarre there. And he does say people are very strange these days. So I don't know. What do you think he does? Uh, or he could very well be unemployed. Yeah, he could be. Sounds about right. Tennis player. I have no idea. <laughs> I think um, I don't know. I mean. If, if Hollywood were to remake it, the, the title would probably be like The Betrayal. But The Room is such a great title because it doesn't tie into the film and you think you're about to see a horror movie, but you kind of get in a, in a different way. Do you have any contact with other members of the cast anymore? Yeah, um, everyone's really cool. You know what? I'm not joking right now. I had a dream about Chris R. last night. <laughs> I swear, not the character, the guy who I know decently well that I was like hanging out with his kids because he had kids recently. So it's it's like we went through Vietnam together. There's some PTSD. <laughs> but it's a, they're all a great group. I think none of us expected this movie to go anywhere. We all survived it. And then it's just kind of funny now that 16 years later, it's still out there. Yeah, I mean, I must be as crazy as Tommy, because 15 years later now, I decided to make another movie with Tommy uh, called Best Friends, and he um, he was great. I mean, I think it helped that he was cast in a role that really fit him. Um, he plays a vampire mortician, and the only request he had, which was very interesting, he's like, you know, what if you and I are same height in the movie? <laughs> So that's all, he, that's all he wanted, he had these platform heels made, so he showed up. 
like almost the same height, and then he's like, you can't shoot the shoes, you just have to shoot here. And sure enough, the first time you see him in the movie, he's wearing the platform heels, and that's all you see. So he wasn't terribly happy about that. But he said, what hour I let it go. <laughs> Uh, my favorite scene probably, I think when they decide to make the room, um, when they decide to make their own movie. Now, the, the, I really like the film, uh, it's, it's a little bit more of like a positive take on the book because, you know, for anybody that's read the book, I, uh, I had no intention of being in the room, but I think in the movie it made it seem like, hey, let, let's do this together, which, uh, I didn't have much involvement in, but I think that was probably one of the better scenes. What about you? Uh, the scene when they recreate uh, Chris R. beating Benny. Oh, that, that was that, that was really good. <laughs> yeah, no, because I don't think Zac Efron had ever seen the room, so he showed up. And on the set, they had monitors of the room playing the whole time, so people would come on set and kind of rewatch it. And Zach Efron said he couldn't believe this thing was real. <laughs> and he just stepped in and kind of like mimicked. Because in the book I talk about the real Chris R. showing up and going real method and like punching the walls and Tommy being really, really scared of him. And so Zach Efron literally had a goatee at that time and had been working out a lot. And he's like, ah, I don't know, is this okay? And they're like, dude, it's exactly what we want. So it worked out perfectly. Why does Mark push Mike over the Underworld? Well, in the original script, it was a little bizarre because he's like, he pushes him into the trash can playfully and then Mike hurts his leg and Mark starts massaging Mike's leg. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if we're going to do that, but so we had, we had to kind of recreate, like we were having fun he just fell down. But it looks really strange, like Mark literally just, boom, just shoves Mike right into the trash can. I, that's probably my favorite scene in the whole movie. Uh, <laughs> Johnny, we see him walking toward, we see him walking in the alleyway, which is enclosed, when you guys watch it this time. It's enclosed, so Johnny literally has nowhere to go, and if he's not stopped by Mike, he just walks straight into the brick wall. Uh, and then everyone just appears and starts playing football, so it's pretty great. <laughs> Uh, the book or the film? Uh, I think he was probably hesitant, you know, because it, it's it's funny, when he released The Room, I was mortified. You know, I was like, okay, no one's going to see this. And then I think with the book, he was like wondering what was going to be the reaction. And then luckily, three weeks after the book came out, James Franco called. And I think that kind of eased him a little bit. So we had this conference call, and James is like, hey, I've, I've never seen The Room, but I'm reading this book, and it's the most insane story. I want to make it a movie. And Tommy's like, well... I stomp you right there. <laughs> Who played me? <laughs> and then James is like, uh, and Tommy's like, well, I suggest Johnny Depp. And James is like, yeah, yeah, good one. And Tommy's like, wait, wait, why you laugh? You know, you don't go down this road, you don't know. And James is like, yeah, it's just the biggest actor alive. But yeah, sure, we'll, we'll try it. And then um, I suggested James, and Tommy's like, yeah, I see you. I see some of your movie. Yeah, some good, some okay, some bad. <laughs> so I think once all that got involved, he was happy with the book. So he, he said, he calls the book the Red Bible, and he approves of it like 40%, but then the movie is like 99%, so I don't know. How many times have you watched the room? Honestly, maybe four, five times max. Um, I usually just kind of come in when the end credits are on. So I know everybody who worked on the movie by name. No, I think it's it's great to see it with the crowd. I think it's one of those movies that if you see it with the crowd, it really comes alive. Uh, does Tommy still think that Matt Damon is called Mark Damon? Um, that's a good question. I'll, I'll, I'll find out next time I see him. I think uh, he still calls him Mark. Yeah, that was what led to you being called Mark. Yeah, if I had I spoken up, it would have been Matt, and I think Mark has a better ring to it. Last question. Why does he wear sunglasses? Because he's a vampire. I think there's part vampire, and I think it's just kind of become a comfort thing. 
you know, only only certain people get to see his uh, beautiful blue eyes, and I'm one of them, so be jealous. All right, one more. So you guys are playing football like very random times. Is there anything behind that, or was that just nothing at all, really? It was just uh, when Tommy and I became friends. I was really into football, so I'd bring a football and we'd play catch, and I think he's just. I figured that's what dudes do, and it's an all-American movie, and they're going to play football. So let's put it in every scene. Uh, but uh, anyway, I hope you guys really enjoy the movie. I'll be doing a signing after. If you guys have books or whatever, I'll see you in the lobby. But uh, thanks so much for coming, guys. Appreciate it.